Why, hello there, Geomancers and Aquamancers alike. Shams Nelson here from Pen and Blade. <coughs> Pen and Blade. In this episode of whatever this episode is called, I thought I'd go through some, uh, we'll do some world building on this map I drew. And I don't know who this guy is, but we'll get to him later. And um, kind of go through the thought process I have when world building based on a kind of randomly drawn map. And some things I like to consider. So, um, should be pretty fun. Let's see what happens. So basically, the first thing I usually do is look in this, at the region around it. And see like, okay, here to the east, we've got ocean. Is there going to be a lot of... Um, is there going to be connection from there? Is there another continent or coming up from the south or from the north? Are there other um, civilizations? So if so, bays are going to be important points of contact and uh, potentially like big civic centers. And the other thing is what's going on over on this side. Are there entrances to the world back there? Since this then river is going to be coming this way, whatever is upriver... Well, okay, we'll get to that in a minute, we'll, but um, is there going to be something over here? And that's going to be the main connection point. I usually try to make my map so they're not, they're like kind of isolated a little bit, so I can create like a little ecosystem that subsists on its own, and there are a few connection points of the outside world. So especially in D&D, &D, then you could have like a little micro uh, world going on there that the players can interact with. And then if you want to expand the campaign or add a new element, you have like these mysterious places beyond the mountains and beyond the forests. Uh, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is be like, all right, where would the best places to be at if you're like a civilization? And, you know, this right here, that's like it kind of makes me think of San Francisco Bay. And f so the, the jaggedness of the edges makes me feel like this is a mountainous, like these are rocky shores. Uh, versus sandy shores would usually be more like you know something like that so so in that case there's only going to be there's going to be like more ideal spots to set up a city and i'm thinking like right like this is probably a mountain this was probably a mountain a long time ago and it's sunk into the seas so and then these are like the parts that are at sea level now so it's all you know jagged and everything like that and i feel like this area right here seems like it's like this is going to be higher elevation and i might even want to do something like that to convey it see what i'm saying actually yeah, i like that so now we've got we know that the ships are going to come through here so this is a very defensible point we're probably going to have like a cool tower here a light uh lighthouse that doubles as a defensive tower maybe a wizard lives there you know he's just gonna shoot a fireball at you if you come by there could literally be like a structure built right there so i think those are some uh some things to, like i think about when i see a point like this like a kind of choke point uh militaristically and so whoever controls that area is going to have control of the whole bay and so we'll probably have a town somewhere along this coast area maybe this is a sandy coast because, uh, you know, this, the elevation's going down this way. So, we got like a sandy coast there. And we got the city is probably sprawled all across. But the main hub will be like right here, let's say. And we'll call this city, I'm going to use the random region generator. I have it up on my computer. And we'll just do the place name, the first one. So 81, ooh, that's my favorite number in 27. 27 is fool, okay, 81 sage sage fool the the city of sage fool <laughs> that's interesting um there's got to be some mythology there but i don't want to get into little details like that because i want to kind of world build the region uh as a whole so the person who controls here and let's say that there is commerce coming in from the seas so we'll put a ship here to signify that hold on let's put a little um a little ship in the waters to kind of show like, oh, okay, there are ships sailing these seas. All right. And um, so this guy's going to have probably, let's say, the, the rest of the bay is pretty rocky, so there aren't going to be a lot of places to create a city. So that's really going to control this whole region, except for maybe up here where the river meets a thing. So there's going to be another city there. And that will be the city of... Oh, man... 
It's okay. I have a backup. I have a backup. We're just going to keep... We're going to move right along here. We've got 83, and that's going to be the city of... Oh, 83, and we need one more. 56. 83, Temple, and 56. Temple... Mist. Oh wow, Sage Fool and Temple Mist. So I'm getting the idea that this is like some kind of. Um, it's making me feel uh, like a Taoist Temple Mist vibe. I'm gonna make it one word. And maybe this is a uh, Temple Mist Bay. That sounds cool. So there's some great temple probably up here in the mountains. You gotta always have the temples in the mountains, all right? With next to a monastery, you know, and. Um, and Temple Mist is the name of all three of those things. Why not? Temple Mist uh, Monastery, where the Temple Mist, the temple is, the Temple of Temple Mist. Um, and it'll, the te the mist, like, pours down the mountains here. So that's where it's, like, it's very mysterious up there. Cool. This is why I like using these random, random region generators. So, also, I was talking about how this uh, rocky... Um, this kind of jagged formation made me feel like it was a rocky kind of area. And there are two basic types of rivers. The one is the rocky type that goes through rocks and it can do all sorts of crazy stuff because it's just trying to find the smoothest path through a very hard area. And so, and then the other one is when it's on a more, uh, set like sedimentary. Yes, I think that's the word, like sand and dirt and stuff. Then it's usually gonna wind down and it might do these things you could even get like these oxbow lakes where would one be here like if it was probably be right there anyways so this one I kind of just did this all kind of randomly but with that sharp turn right here I'm thinking this is a rocky so there's like a waterfall right there you know this is like a pretty hilly rocky region and um so traveling down by boat wouldn't be that feasible so now that makes whoever lives upstream less important to the ecosystem because probably it's not like a great river for transporting goods and um so that's cool so we can have a little bit of isolation there what about over here so let's say these two guys since they've got that same vibe are under the same kingdom then i'm going to say usually i say like all this kind of empty land you know that doesn't really have anything going on in it is just like farmable uh semi flat plains you know like light hills and stuff but mostly you can just farm there so in that case um you know like so let's say they get some their most of their food from the sea seems like they're like a sea sea type people in the bay uh, it's probably like sacred to them and stuff like that so i like that idea maybe there's a really cool like something up right here you know there's got to be like a great statue or something like that i don't know but i'm gonna put two markers right there just like that maybe one is the sage and one is the fool oh that'd be kind of cool <laughs> they stand side by side all right um protecting the uh protecting the the temple mist bay so and then maybe on this side of the rivers, rivers make natural borders, so perhaps this whole region. So let's go ahead and add a color layer. And these guys can be green to signify their like alliance with nature or something. So this whole area is theirs. And I guess over here too. How do they get over there? Maybe there's like a rope bridge right between. That'd be kind of cool. All right, so let's say that. All right, but then as you get into here, what's going on? Who's controlling these regions? All right, and who's defending? The the um, the river makes a natural defense over here, but over here is different. And perhaps, I don't know, do they need to control that area? We'll see. So I'm gonna change this to multiply and make it lighter. Or should I make it, what is it? Like overlay? Nah, that's a good one. All right, whatever. Multiply is cool. Color burn. No. All right. So, oops. That's going to be their region. Just kind of roughing that in. Okay. So, what's going to be going on down there? Let's do, maybe I'll name the whole region using the random region uh, generator. 66 and, um, 
1973. And then we'll look at other points on this map where it might be, uh, where I would think about, like, the lake is definitely another point of interest. So 60, what? I don't remember. Let's just do 60 and 73. Trek. Okay, maybe we won't do 1673. It's weird. And granite. Granite, trek. Granite, let's do 53. Cold granite. The cold granite plains, or something like that, right around here. Whoops. Is that going to be cool? Um, well, who would live in the cold granite plains? I just want to say, like, rock elementals, but that seems too obvious. Maybe it is just a very cold and inhospitable region. The winds that channel down through here. And then they, they, these mountains and the mists bounce them that way. So they just whip across these cold granite plains. And only like little grasses and the toughest of shrubs. Barely any grass even lives there because the soil is so just eroded. And I don't know, it's just not good stuff until you get to the forest. So that's like a buffer zone between the temple mist people. And they're like, all right, that's cool. That's cool. So let's leave that alone there. Maybe it's an accursed place since we're talking fantasy. So before it was like a kingdom lived there, but then there was a curse pushed on, put on it. And then, uh, you know, there could be ruins of an ancient kingdom there in the cold granite plains. Oh, that's good. That's what the granite is. It's like the crumbled castles and the uh, fortresses and barracks. So let's go down to the lake now. The lake would be another point of interest. And also, now that I'm thinking about it, when you have fantasy races, okay, so usually people want to live near water, and I think of usually like agricultural societies more of because they build civilizations they tend to, except for like there are exceptions for like the Mongols and stuff, but you still need large plain regions to sustain the animals, even more so than agriculture probably. So, um, so like kind of these large empty areas are important for developing civilizations and so if you're but if you're doing you know like a pre medieval or you know classical age yeah like it would have to be kind of like stone age and early bronze and stuff like that then maybe the forest would be a good better place because they'd be hunt, hunting and gathering and the forest would do better um so anyway, so but the the elves and certain fantasy races would live in the forest might prefer that. So are there any large forests? Not huge ones here. So I'm not thinking like big civilizations. We could scatter some elves or whatever we want. What elves in there? But I'm not gonna make it like a big thing. And then mountains are the other ones for dwarves usually, but I'm sure there are other mountain dwelling fantasy or even human races. And you know, I'm not seeing any huge mountainous areas where it would be like, oh, there's a giant dwarf, like whatever, but we could have some dwarves in any of these mountains, I suppose, because they could dig down below the earth. And I'm thinking that this area would probably be really beautiful because it's by the water, and there'd probably be like waterfalls with little tributaries down here, and it's a little bit secluded, so that's what I would think. But let's go down to the lake, and let's name the lake and see if it's a hospitable place to live. Wait, zero, zero, one, ninety. I got a zero, zero, and a one. I think that's a one, right? There's no 100, is there? Oh, it's one to 100. There's no zero, so zero, zero, zero. Okay, so I'm going to say that's one. And then we're going to go to 93. Free, 93. Free Topaz Lake. Free Topaz Lake. Let's do the first one again. Uh... 30 so we're gonna do um topaz orc or free orc lake let's do free orc lake all right so we could have some orcs down here and um so this is giving me the idea that south of here this isn't the most ideal place to put this but whatever we'll just do that for now um that south of here we got some some places where orcs are not free and there's some orcs that came up here and they're free now so you know what we're gonna have to we're gonna have to erase where free orc lake is and we're gonna because we're gonna need a fortress because they're gonna definitely the orcs are gonna want to build a series of fortresses defending this area all right 
because they were X like you know they know how to do that stuff so maybe there are three fortresses that guard against the bl the southern borders and aside from that mountains are pretty make it pretty impassable so now over here we're gonna have different uh free orc villages you know just kind of chilling at the lake and maybe they're peaceful and everything aside from wanting to fight off the invaders from the south that creates potential for adventure hooks if they're like oh no we're gonna get overrun we need someone to go in there and do this but we can't go for orcs because it'll be too easy so we need some people to other adventurers to go and infiltrate the castles to the south but what is over here? The free orcs didn't just come up into some land that didn't belong to anyone. Maybe, it let, who, who is, what are these areas called? Let's see. So 58, so it's one of the other things I think of in general. I guess I should have, I could have made this more organized, but I just wanted to have some fun. Uh, 80 whatever, 84 let's say in 36. I don't know what it was before. 84 and 36. Dragon, oh this is good, all right. Dragon Point. I, mean, I don't know what the E is about. I think I was trying to be fancy. Um, so, what, did, what would be the Dragon Point? Maybe like we put one like really tall mountain and that's Dragon Point. And I use this idea on another map and I like it. I think it's a cool idea. I would like to play a game. Dragon Point. Um, probably make that one word. I'm not, I like to do that kind of thing. So, Dragon Point Mountain. Right? I guess that this is the feeding grounds for the dragon so there's like horses or like llamas or like uh what would be like some fantasy things like basilisks <laughs> basilisk basilisk I don't know man just like some kind of creatures running amok smaller dragons in this area and this dragon lives on this mountain and he hunts there so if you're an orc traveling around that area you, it might be fair game that you get snatched up too I don't know if it is but wait a minute who is our mystery shopper over here ding 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 I actually totally forgot about him he seems like a militant type like some kind of invading you know like okay so we got some people coming in so let's say this is where we've set the stage um there aren't too many players in this area there we've just got the orcs in the south and well, what have we decided is over here um let's put another civilization and maybe this is like the edge of their civilization and they get along with the temple mist guys because just for now their leader i guess is a uh you know, he's not trying to expand militaristically, but that could change. 85, 94. 85. E Devil. Oh, wow. Okay. 94. 94. Devil Rat. <laughs> the Devil Rat Kingdom. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So this is the, no, or this is the city of Devil Rat, of course. And it's this, or there's a demonic kingdom over here. And, in fact, there's a... Um, there's two temples, the twin, the twin temples, the temple of peace and the temple or like one is like yin and one is yang. OK, that kind of thing. But we could give them different names in our world. We'll call one mist and one matter. So this is the temple of mist and this is the temple of matter. And in the temple of matter, that's where the militant monks train. And they fight off the demon hordes that live to the west. So let's make some, let's color some red for some demon hordes. Alright. And then we're going to add, um, do they go all the way up there? Yeah, why not? They're, they're sick. You know what? They have the forests even. They're a plague. The only thing holding them back, why don't they come through this forest? Um, oh yeah, there are dwarves in these here mountains. All right, let's do the dwarves in there real quick. Then we'll let this guy come in. So they're they're coming in all over the place. Let's say this is a bad time. All right, for these people. But the dwarves are holding them off because they don't want them swarming up in the mountains because the mountains are sacred to them. So let's give the dwarves a nice cool blue color. Is that different enough? Yeah, that's good. All right, so they're they're fighting each other off, <laughs> and then we'll give the orcs a orangey color. Let's see what that looks like. Is it gonna be different enough? Not really. Um, we'll give them a yellow color. 
can you even see that whatever they're like not really a true um they're not as uh developed you know they're still probably in that like late uh like neolithic early bronze age maybe early class no not even they're not like learning and studying and stuff they're just like all right living our lives getting acclimated starting to build cities up from scratch stuff like that or build but they got a jump start because they've seen what coming from the south they've lived in the conditions that so they have like the uh, potential technology and this area i'm just going to leave it alone for now whatever we've we've done enough world building for now let's leave a little mystery because we want our homeboy over here to come in here and our come this commander guy he's going to see these lands as a potential for plunder and all that wonderful stuff so first thing he's going to realize is that if he can control this bay that um you know things will be going pretty pretty well for him in overall so uh this area is going to be protected by what you know what i'm saying that's what we got to figure out and does he break through let's say he does break through okay and um takes the city of sage fool so now sage fool this and the surrounding regions probably because why let's say he has the city of sage pool the rest of the cities he's got a really strong foothold he's got all the supplies that sage fool has access to and um he's got a base to bring in to defend this area basically create a naval blockade so that if temple mist has a port and he controls all the ships of sage pool so that's pretty big he's probably going to take this whole surrounding region temple mist might be able to resist and also maybe like i would say this whole area because these two temples are going to be military like strongholds to fight back against um this guy but what he's going to want to do probably next if he's trying to take over thing he's going to realize that these demon the demon kingdom is probably pretty vast and how is he going to take on all these demons? I'm assuming he's got a vast army coming from another land. Maybe he decides, you know, it's not worth defeating all these demons. And maybe I should leave these green, uh, what's it called, you know, the temple mist people to be a buffer zone. So let's give this guy, he's going to be like a purple color. All right, so we're going to go back to our colored map. And this part, this whole area is now purple and including this and you know what he's probably going to say we need to expand south to create like more buffer zones because sage fool is now and then maybe like negotiate with them so that temple mist is like n free but like they're not allowed to like build a military and stuff they're kind of like under inspection or he just has spies to make sure they don't and he just tells him don't do that and then he would probably come all the way down to here and build like a fortress town now the cold granite plains i'm assuming that they're not just cold and inhospitable but even more so they're filled with like skeletal creatures and such things like that so he doesn't even want to go in there it's not really worth his men there might be loot to be plundered so this would be a great place for adventurers to start i'd say and he's like look if you get loot then and we'll pay you handsomely for it but maybe you're not allowed to keep it so that's the trick and they have like i don't know or they pay people to go out i don't know well the idea would be that in these crumbled ruins of an ancient civilization there are artifacts of great power and the name of the fortress he decides to name it He's a uh, 4267, so he decides to name it Midnight. This guy's a 67 Grove. Decides to name it Midnight Grove, maybe because it's by Little Oasis. Grove, um, what would be like a, like a military town, fortress, uh, fort, Fort Midnight Grove. All right, <laughs> that's the name of that place. So Fort Midnight Grove is built by this like, grove that like at night the flowers bloom or something and it smells really good around midnight. It happens every night. So, um, or maybe exactly at midnight. Let's go with that. 
so he's uh so that's pretty cool so this guy's coming to take over what is this island right here you know i haven't really touched upon that and maybe it's filled with some mysterious entity that cannot be that is like too powerful to be challenged i don't know i didn't really even think about it until now and also down here so we'll leave a little mystery you know what why don't you guys let me know what you think would be up on this guy we're gonna call that the northern isle and you know what or let's give it a name let's give it a proper name uh 51 and 42 vile yeah that's right it's vile vile midnight no we already got midnight 81 that one we got two in the beginning vile sage all right that's good because it goes with the whole sage fool oh that's perfect vile sage island all right because you know there's a legend of the vile sage that lives there and anyone goes there never returns i'm serious bro don't go there bro why you gotta always try to go places that you don't need to be at anyways um whoa what did that i don't know how that happened all right so we're gonna put a little green down here so this is interesting so this is like how i like to work because it's almost like we've created the and now, oh man, these poor guys, the Temple Mist people are fighting a war on two fronts, the between the Devil Rats and the, um, and the, uh, invaders, the, the, from across the seas or whatever. So let's just define his borders. So you know what they're going to want to do is they're going to want to make an alliance with the dwarves and the orcs. That's what I'm thinking. And they're going to, eh, the question is, like, you can't really... What are you going to do about the... Maybe they all need to ally together to take out the devil, the demon army, because or else they're all going to be overrun if they keep fighting amongst themselves. And then once that happens, the th then whew, all bets are off, man. What's going to go down? Let me know in the comments below. <clears throat> and I think that's it. So this has been like, I guess just to do a quick recap, some things I like to think about, and I'll have to do like a more organized video, but is like, what are the surrounding regions and how buffered are they? You know, mountains, seas, forests, how thick are these forests, how tall are these mountains? So to s decide how isolated the area is. Then I look for key areas, usually near water, where civilizations would like to thrive, would be likely to thrive. So usually near water, either the sea for fishing, fresh water, you need that too, rivers. Um, but if it's like a forest or mountain-based civilization, then large patches of those. Then I choose like one area I'm thinking of elevation. I'm trying to really like feel out the topography of the area and like what it would look like in my mind. And I'm saying like, oh, this is gonna be a cool spot, Sage Fool. I can see it like looking down this long beach and over to that's on the right when you're looking out at the bay. And then to the left, there are mountains curving around to your side. And the, I mean, I guess the sunsets wouldn't be that nice. They'd, sun, they'd set over land and pretty early because it's elevated on that side. But whatever, it's cool. Or uh, that would be sun rises. No, sun. Oh, so sunrise. Over, anyways, whatever. Why am I talking about this? Then I like to use the random region generator a lot of the time, and I can leave a link for that in the description of this video to come up with names and ideas. But you can come up with that any way you want. And actually, I'd like to hear how do you guys come up with ideas to first start off building a new world because. Without the random region generator, it's kind of like, okay, I can go start with anything. I usually use the geography, like we've kind of done here, to spark ideas. But yeah, alright, cool. Till next time, y'all. Peace, God bless, and stay fantastic, everyone.